Let's talk to Gaurav Sharma. He is an oil market analyst and Forbes columnist. Welcome, Gaurav. Good to be back. Right, you've sent a chart. Normally, charts are quite dull, I think, but um, this one is of the oil benchmark prices. Friday's closed, years to date. Indeed. Headlines in the FT recently. OPEC and Russia poised to raise crude output after Trump protest over prices. Market pulling back, okay? Is this, have we seen the top of the market or I, are we going to $100? I, I think we have. And I think if you are a, if you are a, an oil supply side analyst, you'd find this particular chart to be pretty dull too because what it tells us is that there's been a lot of kerfuffle the oil price always flatters to deceive. It tries to go to the top end, and then we're back in the same range. And in that same range, we have stayed since the start of the year. And the problem, Moose, is, is that there is still a lot of oil out there. OPEC and Russia will in some ways claim that the inventories, the OECD inventories, are down to their five-year levels. So maybe that gives them an excuse, which they most certainly need to start upping their game, to start upping production. Now, the problem here is that we had some geopolitical infection, whether we talk, whether we go all the way back to Syria, we talk about the, the Yemen conflict, we talk about Trump uh, putting, slapping sanctions unilaterally on, on, on Iran. So what we, we saw was all the money managers saw rub their hands with glee and say, you know what, let's try and extend this rally. So they bump, they go in on the market and they make all their long calls. So what you see is, is that the front end of the futures curve, which is where most of these hedge fund guys actually go, is, has went for, for Brent as far as I'm concerned, goes from Brent, from, goes from backwardation to contango. Right. But if you look at the, the, the sort of six month out contract, it's still in backwardation. Admittedly, it's come down from three and a half dollars, say in April, to about a dollar and a half right now. But it is still in backwardation. And that tells you that the physical guys, the guys who actually look at a barrel of oil and turn up at the end of the pipeline, are saying, well, we don't buy this, uh, buy this rally. Inevitably, there's a correction. Correction why? Because Trump goes on Twitter, says OPEC is doing all sorts of hanky panky and yep. that oil price is too high. Suddenly, the Saudis feel compelled, to, especially because it's an election year in the U.S., feel compelled to say, well, you know what, maybe it's mission accomplished. That gives the Russians an excuse to say, well, you know what, we, think we should be upping production. And then this goes back to what I've been saying on, on coal finance all along for the last 12 to 18 months is that OPEC has to, you know, it has no exit strategy. It needs to exit at some point. And basically what the, the correction that we are seeing is, and a lot of, lot of traders already started booking it in, is that when OPEC meets later this month, it probably might be the moment where they say, all right, you know, mission accomplished. The OECD inventories are down to the, their five-year level, five-year averages. Uh, let's, uh, let's start upping production. <laughs> and, there, and there you have it. So we'll keep oscillating this range. Now, let me, let me also say, so I'm not predicting a total collapse. We're not seeing 20, we're not seeing 120. But in, in the middle of that, everybody's trying to grab the headline with, with these outlandish predictions. Yep. We had one, one hedge fund manager who promptly deleted his tweet saying even 300 was likely. You know, off late, you've had a, a plethora of people go on the broadcasting airwaves saying, uh, we, we'll, we'll touch 100. I've just come back from Texas and the project managers, the project financiers, nobody believes that we'll be at 100. They are actually preparing to work comfortably at 60. And would you believe it, everybody from BP to the smallest independent is right now striving for a $30 break even. I'm not saying it'll be 30. But that tells you that, that the guys who are drilling for the, for the black gold are themselves not convinced that we'll be in three figures. OK, so we've hit the top of the market and we're going south. I, th I, I oh, definitely. Uh, if you are trying to place a spread, I, I, as usual, people will tell I'm a bro will say that I'm a broken record. I still remain net short. If you take Brent as a benchmark, yep. take take three points, uh, three hundred points either side, uh, three hundred cents either side of seventy six, and play on the news. But OPEC convenes on the twenty second. Of course, we will speak before that. But before, but on the week that OPEC convenes, uh, convenes, I, th I think being short is the way to go. As far as the West Texas goes, well. I think 65, 300 either side, 300 points spread either side of, uh, of 65 would, uh, would be about par. And I think this is a market, if you, if you want to make money, I think right now I, I am still net short. I'm not offering investment advice. I'm merely saying what, what I, how I would action that. But that is not to say that the oil industry is, is, is in a bad, uh, bad place. I, uh, here we, we discussed once what is my price target for BP, and it was 550, and BP has gone above that. Yep. If you look at the small independents, you look at the OFS guys, the, the stocks are doing well because 
there are people out there who are looking at, at the P&L situations. They're looking at whatever these companies, law, oil, gas companies, are small of filing, and they are convinced that the industry is striving for a lower break-even. And if the oil price goes to 100, all, all the well, but it's not getting there anytime soon. On that note, Karath, we've run out of time. Thank you very much indeed.